All right, so we have this EQ3. Let's go in and assign each one of these things. There's low, mid, high, and listen to what that does. Just as expected. What if we wanted to do something a little bit different? We could also experiment a little bit and maybe map this frequency response to the bass, the low bass. And I'm just playing around. Make this one to the mids. And let's also map the delay to the low bass and the reverb to the low bass. So now I have CC21, which is the low bass, going to multiple things. One, two, three, four things. Now let's listen. I get full effects when I have my low bass up. And this EQ sweeps as well. But that's not too interesting. Let's make it more so by doing what's called an, a range inversion. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to right click it and say invert range. And then for the delay and the reverb, what I want it to do is delay and reverb come up when there's no low end. So right now it's the opposite. So I'm going to invert that one and I'm going to invert this one and do this by right clicking. And let's see what that does. See how those are all working in conjunction with each other. Let's see if we can add another one. Do say this to the low. And maybe invert this. I'm just winging it. Okay, and it just goes on and on in here. You could do the panning as well, cause that to be controlled by one knob. Basically what we're doing is on top of our remote script that we already have loaded here with the controller, we have all this other stuff mapped to one knob. So I count five, six things mapped to that same knob. And it just can go on and on. Let's see if I can map the crossfader to it. Okay, so that is MIDI mapping multiple things to one knob and inverting the ranges to get some variation because the idea in performance is one knob does a lot. Okay, we're going to look at that in the form of macros in the next video.